songs for the stars above. I'd like to introduce Phyllis Olin. She serves as the Western States Legal Foundation's board president. She first got involved in nuclear abolition in the nuclear abolition movement in the 1980s when she co-founded the local chapter of architects, designers, planners for social responsibility with her late husband, Bill. This past spring, she had the honor of reading a statement at the United Nations on behalf of the Western Legal States, Western States Legal Foundation and 44 organizations in 16 countries on creating conditions for international peace and human security. Please welcome Phyllis. I'm going to read a poem by William Butler Yeats. He wrote this in 1919. It's called The Second Coming. It describes complete anarchy inspired by the breakdown of society after the Russian Revolution and in the aftermath of World War I. The first image evokes panic and confusion because the falcon becomes lost just as humanity's sense of morality seemed lost after the World War. Turning and turning in the widening gyre, the falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood-dimmed tide is loosed and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack all conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. Surely some revelation is at hand. Surely the second coming is at hand. The second coming. Hardly are those words out when a vast image out of spiritus mundi troubles my sight. Somewhere in sands of the desert, a shape with lion body and the head of a man, a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun, is moving its slow thighs, while all about it real shadows of the indignant desert birds. The darkness drops again. But now I know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle. And what rough beast, its hour come at last, slou slouches toward Bethlehem to be born. Um, it's my privilege now to introduce Jackie Cabasso who is executive director of Western States Legal Foundation and my friend. And I don't have to say anything else about her. I think all of you know her and love her almost as much as I do. How many of you have been here uh, once before? How many of you have been here more than five times before. Okay, how many of you have been here 20 times? How many of you have been here 37 times? <laughs> okay, so I think on behalf of all of us, it is my honor to accept the Lifetime Achievement Award that was bestowed on us by Dan Ellsberg. So let's hear it for us. Okay, so I think that poem that Phyllis read really captures the moment. And so I also want to thank you for being able to get out of bed and come here, despite how awful everything seems right now. We have to be here. We have no choice. But I do want to share a little good news. We have few victories. Here's one that I like to uh, make you aware of. The U.S. Conference of Mayors, which is the national nonpartisan association of mayors with uh, cities of, with populations over 30,000. There are about 1,400 of those cities. 
unanimously adopted a Mayor's for Peace resolution on July 1st, calling on all presidential candidates to make known their positions on nuclear weapons and to pledge U.S. global leadership in preventing nuclear war, returning to diplomacy, and negotiating the elimination of nuclear weapons. So I want you to know that, and I want you to bombard the media and bombard the candidates and use this to say the, the mayors of America's big cities want you to talk about how you're going to get rid of nuclear weapons as part of the presidential campaign. So in just a few minutes, we're going to process to the west gate of the lab. Upon arrival, we will participate in a traditional Japanese bond dance to call in the ancestors including the victims of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and that will be led by Chizu Hamada. Following the dance, sirens will sound in remembrance of the victims of the atomic bombs dropped by the United States on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Those si sirens will signal a die-in. Those who choose may lie down and be outlined in chalk in the gate area. Some may choose to get up and leave their outline. Others may, uh, may stay. Uh, in position and risk arrest. Now, some people may choose to risk arrest by standing in the gate area in front of the prone bodies and the outlines. Those who choose not to risk arrest will stand aside and bear witness. The chalk outlines we will briefly leave behind today are a solemn reminder of the shadows of human beings vaporized by atomic bombs 74 years ago that still haunt the walls and sidewalks of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. If you are planning to risk arrest, we invite you to put your name on a sign-up sheet, which is at the table down there. Mary Lee is waving her hands. There's also legal information for people considering risking arrest. And finally, in a last-minute um, development, which we're very happy about, Yoko Kaneko, Julie Hernandez, and Louise Dunlap will lead us with drumming and chanting at the beginning of our march. And they'll be drumming in solidarity with the Buddhist nuns and monks of Nipanzen Miyohogi. So I would invite everyone now to catch your breath, get some water if you need it. There's water at the table here. And visit the tables, visit the porta potty and begin processing to the gate of the lab down that way. Thank you all for being here. I want to let down my soul shield Inside of Liverpool, yeah Inside of Liverpool, yeah Inside of Liverpool I want to let down my soul shield Inside of Liverpool I want to stay with you, oh.